Things go from calm to chaos really quick around here. Folks, what's happening? We're back in the shop. Actually, I'm in the museum here, showroom. Uh, pretty empty right now because we're getting ready for a big event. I mean, there are a lot of cars in here still, but pretty empty. But how quickly does it go from calm to chaos around here? So we'll turn you around. So we got a car here. This one's getting ready. We got an engine sitting here. Uh, tools. Uh, hot rod drag car, rather. Not the hot rod, but the drag car sitting on the lip there. My pile of tools there. So the car over here. Getting some maintenance done. I uh, wanted a cover. Uh, this one just came in. Uh, I might have saw that in one of the earlier vlogs. Uh, spot right there where I'm going to put the hot rod. We've got a table over there. We're going to show you what we're going to do over here on this table here shortly. Uh, we got some stuff we're going to put on the table. A little video for you. So uh, uh, happy days today. It's a lot going on. We're busy. Uh, it's uh, kind of a little break right now. Uh, you know, it, it, everybody's kind of grabbing a sandwich or something. But we got a lot to do. Here's a cool little car. So this uh, just came in. Um, uh, visiting the collection here. So this is a, another Rover. I think it's a 39. I'm not sure. It could be 39. 39, 37, 39, I think. But uh, just got a quick paint job, but uh, needs a little mechanical work. Belongs to a friend of ours. Really pretty good shape, but uh, needs some love. Uh, I'm gonna walk out here in the warehouse. I'm gonna show you how that's a station wagon. We'll, we'll show you that later. That's super rare. But uh, we're gonna walk out here. Show you another car. There's a Bug Eye Sprite. A P3, Rover, that's a Rover. Okay, walking by that. There's another Rover, there's a Land Rover. There's another Rover. I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna show you two cars here. Of course, the Chevelle's in the back there. We're gonna do a, we're gonna do a complete video on the Chevelle here coming up pretty soon. I gotta get it in the shop. We gotta do a little maintenance with this thing. <laughs> it's a monster. So we're gonna do some work on that. We're actually thinking about changing the rear axle and uh, whatnot. Uh, belongs to Richard. So we, uh, we'll probably bring that in and uh, make some make some noise with that at some point. All right. So over here, this just came in. This is a really cool car. So this is a Rover SD1. It's a 1980. It is a uh, Buick. Uh, it's a V8 based on the aluminum Buick uh, block that Rover uh, re remodeled and re-engineered. Um, this car has about 11,000 miles on it. It is a 1980. So it is literally like a brand new car. Um, you know, the typical things with any car, uh, it, the bushings are gone, it, it, suspension needs work, and the brakes are a little sticky, all those kind of things. A little dark in here, but I don't know if you can see, oops, sorry, you can see that dashboard and these seats. Um, we'll, we'll do some more on this, but uh, this, I mean, there goes the door, closing solid, uh, it appears to run really well, the motor's in great shape, uh, it's only got 11,000 miles on it, so no rust at all anywhere, and uh, I'm sure, I haven't seen it, but I'm sure it probably looks just as good underneath, so uh, needs a little wash, but in storage, uh, but wow, that's amazing, and then uh, let's go over here, <laughs> check this out, we're going to get back to the hot rod, but <laughs> so this... This is a Bentley. Um, not sure what year it is on this one, but it's definitely 30s. And uh, it is just loaded with parts. But this car is uh, it's fairly rare. And um, especially here in America, um, we have several Bentleys in the collection. Um, I'll open the hood here. I just I do it with one hand. Whoa! But, uh, uh, really dark under there, but I'll get some light on this uh, at some point. You'll see it, but uh, very similar. Um, I think I've shown you some of the other Bentley engines before, but uh, this car right now is uh, mechanically pretty much good. Uh, the drivetrain is done, and it's frames all painted. It's it's been apart, so now it's uh, due for body work. And now, although it might look sad now, it's all there and. Uh, few months on the body and this car could be really quite something special i know it looks like some kind of crazy uh american rat rod hot rod right now but 
trust me, this is not a rat rod. Um, the fenders are off the front, or uh, your wings, if you're English, you can call it wings. You know, if you're English or from England or an English car, of course, it's going to have a wing here. This is not a hood. It's a bonnet. Uh, it's not a trunk on the back. It's a boot. So uh, I get them mixed up all the time because we've got both here, but there's your boot right there that opens up. So, um, But, uh, yeah, all that stuff's inside, fender liners, all kinds of mechanical parts, interior, all that. So definitely uh, they got a lot of potential. Not a rat rod. Uh, this thing is, uh, you know, definitely... Uh, rare and, and it, it, rarer every year that goes by so cool stuff all right well anyways we got a lot of stuff to move around turn you around um it's a nice day outside unfortunately stuck here in the garage but yeah that's the way it goes you know uh, it's nice and cool in here it's warm outside but it's nice and cool outside uh in, uh, in here in the shop still so that's kind of good and uh, we're just enjoying the weather and uh whatnot so we're going to get to a little project here. Of course, we had a lot more to go on the drag car uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, we're working on that. But uh, let me, uh, let me uh, get a couple things set up, and then I'll, I'll be back. All right. All right. So, uh, there we go. How's that? Yeah, I guess so. All righty. Um, so being a well wood, you can see here's the adapter plate, rotor, really nice. I've already put these studs in, um, but these are the hubs. Bearing goes in here, bearing seal. There's your bearings, outer bearings. I put these uh, studs in just to see if it fits. We're going to check this on the car. See if the pattern is right, but that goes like this. And we have a whole bunch of bolts to put in for the bottom, as you can see. Uh, these hold the adapter plate to the rotor. These hold the adapter plate to the hub. These are the brackets. So these will go on the, above the spindles. Here are the calipers. Really nice. I'll take this out so you can see. So, Wellwood makes a really great product. Uh, we've got them on the back of the car. So there you go. Uh, hopefully you can see that. You got your dual piston. So four pistons, one caliper, a nice little compact package, and uh, really, really great stuff. Um, obviously, this comes out. Don't lose the cutter pin. I really should have my magnetic parts tray here, but on white paper we're clean one of the things you want to do is always make sure you're doing all this stuff on a clean surface if you got a dirty workbench uh, put down some paper some cardboard wipe it off whatever you got to do i mean work with bearings brakes and all that stuff try to keep it clean it, you know you really it's important um almost surgical all right here we go here are our pads so those are our pads to each put those over here We've got some uh, Loctite, because we want to Loctite all these hub bolts before we tighten them down. Um, hardware kit for mounting the plates, so that's going to go in the car once we get these assembled over here. Uh, we still got to check our, our spindle size to make sure, but I'm pretty sure we're good. Uh, the Willwood kit comes with everything you need. We've got, uh, here are our seals. Uh, comes with a new heavy-duty washer. The one thing it doesn't have, of course, is a spindle nut and a cotter pin. You're going to have to use the one that you already have uh, or get a new one. But um, they don't come with the spindle nut, nor do they come with the cotter pin that holds it on. Uh, we got a couple of other things here hanging out on the table. We'll get rid of that. I'm going to put this right up here with that one. Well, let's open this up. Line lock. There it is. Line lock. All right, so this just came in today as part of the car that up. Let's see what we got in here. Um, car's got a line lock on it, but uh, I don't know, it's missing parts or something. I don't know who, uh, we'll just, uh, we'll put that over there. I don't know who worked on it last, doesn't matter. Here we go. Okay, so let's get this out. We got, I'm going to put these over here. I hope you can see. I'll put them right here. I'll move this hub. Alright, so you got a fuse holder. Screws, some brass plugs, mounting screws. There's your switch. Right. 
it if you can see that. That's your, your switch. Press it to lock. Let go to unlock. And here's your solenoid valve. I put this with the box. Here's some instructions. Yeah. Um, so here we go. Uh, I'm, I suppose we should keep those instructions. It's blue. Too bad. Everything, everything else is red, but that's all right. Um, we got to take a look. But this is essentially just a solenoid valve. So you can see, I don't know if you can see, right there it goes all the way through. And so that's regular braking. And then up here, of course, we have a split off to go to uh, the valve, which will lock the front brakes from working and uh, uh, lock the front brakes, rather, uh, when you put the pedal down. So there you go. That's got to go in the car. It's another part. What else have we got here? Um, if I move this camera, I'm going to put you over here. And uh, this box, um, something every drag car should have, very important. So here we go, I'm going to bring this out here. This is a drive shaft safety loop. Um, package bolts right here, washers, all that kind of stuff. Comes with two of these loops, like that. And two really uh, pretty beefy brackets, I don't know if you can see these. Lots of holes in the tops. So they line up a little differently. Now what we're going to do is, I'm going to bolt this up under the car, like that, or like this. It depends on where you're watching here. And that loop will go there, and that loop will go there. And then of course, if I can hold this all at once, just kind of roughly together. This comes together, it depends on how you have it lined up. It could be like, like that. So, uh, what does that do? Well, it's heavy metal. Keeps your drive shaft from falling off. If you break the front U-joint on the car, and, oops, sorry, that was loud. Um, during a pull, the drive shaft can dig into the ground, and you can go flipping all around, and that's absolutely what you do not want to do. So, to avoid that, and, uh, yeah, to avoid that, we put in this bracket, it's kind of an emergency use kind of thing, just, it's kind of like the, uh, the bell housing, you know, you put it there, you hope you never need it, but if it's there, it might save your butt, believe me. The drive shafts can dig into the ground, flip the car over, and, uh, you know, you're in trouble at that point. So, uh, yeah, we're trying to avoid that. Um, found this. Um, this actually comes with the line lock here, kit. So there we go. A little fancy smancy, uh, not too super high quality, but... There's a little red light mounted on the dash, mounted somewhere there. You press the button, the light comes on. Let you know you got your line lock on. So we'll, uh, I like things that light up. So we'll definitely add that to the dashboard or in the driver's view. So once again, let's recap. Um, Wellwood brakes, these are front discs. 12.95, I think. I forget what it says in the book. Um, but they make them to fit pretty much everything. Camaros, Chevelles, uh, you know, Chevys. Uh, Fords, uh, Wellwood's got a really, really great product line. Um, if you take a look at this, you know, the billet is just really super nice. The bearing races are very, very smooth, well made. Um, one thing I like about these, no more of the old pop off the cap with the screwdriver kind of thing. Look at that. All right, we just, uh, they've been around for a while, but got a no ring seal around there. Your, of course, your spindle nut will be right there, but really a nice sealed unit. Uh, so no dirt, no dust, no anything. So the dust cap now is threaded on billet and really for, it also gives you a nice clean look on the outside. A little branding there for Willwood, but um, gives you a super clean look. So uh, nice stuff. And you can see by, if I hold this up here, you can see how, how nice these are. I'm sure they're, you know, obviously milled out of a giant block of billet or not, or a big block of billet. And, uh, you know, for aluminum, still a lot of weight there. So really good unit. These backing plates, very, very nice. They're lightweight yet strong. They got the studs in them and uh, your giant uh, flat head, wherever that is. Uh, so definitely a step above when it comes to what was on the car. Um, and, you know, you can look up for your car. I don't know what you got, whether you got a Camaro, a Chevelle, a Ford, a Galaxy, uh, you know, whatever it is. Uh, look it up. Um, you can buy the entire kit just like I got here. So all of this stuff. Except for the line log, uh, all is all the brake stuff all comes in one kit from Wilwood, so you're not having to worry about ordering uh, 25 different things. Uh, um, they kind of put it together so that everyone will know, um, and, and, you know, what kit fits their car, and uh, it, you know, it's easy. Um, 
If you've never done this before, if you've never put this kind of thing together, get somebody to help you out that knows what they're doing uh, or has done this before. Uh, it is kind of a DIY thing. It could be, but uh, honestly, it's good to have some advice of somebody. If you have a mechanic friend or, or you're working together, I mean, read your instructions, obviously. Brakes are important. Um, obviously, you want to stop. Uh, drag car, well, we want to stop at the finish line. Hopefully, you're not going in a sand trap, so that's uh, what we're shooting for. But um, if you're going to put them on your car, we'll make a huge difference from factory brakes for sure. But um, if you've never done brakes before, get someone to help you out uh, to uh, put them in. Um, it's really not that tough. Um, kind of bolts up to the factory stuff, so you just go in there, take all the factory stuff off. All this stuff mounts in, you put the wheels back on, and it's uh, like they were never, you know, no one even knows they're there, if, depending on what you got for wheels. If you got some wheels that are open, of course, they do say wheelwood right there. So wheelwood right on the brake. So this uh, caliper, you'll be able to see. Um, you can choose the color of the caliper. It can be red, it can be black. Uh, and I think some of the other ones, some of the different braking styles, you can get other colors as well. Uh, if not, you can, I suppose you can always paint them, but these have a really nice powder coat finish, so... Really, really good stuff. All right. A common question is, could Evans potentially melt plastic components? For your average recreational rider, this is typically not an issue. For those racers that go through some extreme conditions and long hours, that could be a problem. One way to cure that problem is update any of the plastic components, such as a plastic water pump impeller, you could update to aluminum one. You could eliminate the wire T fittings in your coolant hoses, and also update your hoses to a silicone based hose. Once you do that, your machine's pretty much gonna be bulletproof. Hey guys, it's Mr. B, I'm in the shop, and uh... We hired a new janitor. We're gonna see how he works out. I don't know, he's a little rough around the edges, but yeah, you know, we'll, we'll train him. on the mopping job, you know? You know, mop up kept you slobs. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Sure, well anyways, so uh, not only does he play a doctor, he's also one on TV. <laughs> yeah. So here he is today, he's mopping. And uh, we'll get back to the vlog in a minute, but the reason I'm doing this is because you see him hopping, he's cleaning up, we're having a celebration of the Rover Motor Cars here uh, for uh, four days. So we'll be working on that, but... And 12th year. 12th year, 12th year for the uh, Rover, Rove America. So uh, cool stuff, and... The largest gathering of Rover automobiles in North America. There it is. <clears throat> Doesn't mean much, but <laughs> <laughs> it's the only gathering of Rover oh, no, that's not true. <laughs> But uh, so it's cool. I mean, we have a lot of interesting and unique Rover cars here. And if you guys uh, haven't seen them, you may have seen some of them in the vlogs. And uh, you can check out the channel. Uh, there's more on there, and we'll uh, we'll show you a few more. But uh, interestingly enough, this guy with the mop, he's out of here on Sunday, and he's going to China. That's right. They got mop, and they there. And uh, you know, we're gonna. We're going to focus in on the proper use of mops, which mop to use for which job in our next episode. So make sure you, you subscribe to that. We're not, we're not doing that. We're not, we're not doing that. There's only really one sane guy in the garage today. He, he's over here. He hates being on camera, so we're not going to show him. George is working up on a lift. The uh, 55 is back over in the corner. Now, I know I just showed you the, the layout of those. <laughs> I know we just showed you the layout of those Willwood brakes. Um, they are the right ones, but the wrong mounting brackets came with them. So um, we'll, we got those coming in a couple days. They'll be in. We'll get those on the car. Uh, everything else was right. Spindle size bearings, all that was right. But just the wrong uh, 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 mounting brackets because these are Dan Chuck 55 Chevy replacement spindles. They're not factory spindles. You know, we, we thought they might have been, but they're obviously re aftermarkets. They're good, but they're just aftermarket. So we're going with a different bracket. So uh, we're over here now uh, in, in this spot where, it's, where we have all the parts for the car. So what do we got left? Let's talk about that. What's left to work on in this car? Well, we got to get our uh, wiring straightened out. For one, um, we definitely have to get the MSD ignition set up. We have to get the fuel lines. This is just on here to kind of block those up. That's coming off. We got something better. Uh, we got to 
a lot of fittings and hose. I think I sh might have showed you that. Uh, it's like Christmas. Whoops. Uh, we got a ton of hoses and stuff. So that's the fuel delivery system, the fuel pumps here. Uh, so there's a lot of little things to do. Um, one of the things I got to do over here is we're going to remove this passenger side seat. We'll take you inside the car here. You can see it. So we're going to get this seat out of here for now. I'm going to lift up these rugs. Uh, we've got the, the Kirkley seat sitting over there. So we got to pick up the rugs, drill some holes in the floor, and uh, get that permanently mounted so that we can hook up the five point. Uh, our driver, uh, Wayne, uh, will be nice and safe in here. We're going to bolt that down to make sure it's extra tight and everything's secured. Old coil laying on the floor there. That was mounted on the firewall. That's going. We got an MSD set. So uh, I don't know what they were thinking, but that's really kind of... Let's just put it this way. We're taking it out. So that'll get fixed. Uh, radiator hoses are on, power steering pumps on, although little problem there. Uh, looks like we're missing some kind of spacer. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but this is not power steering pump right here. This is the pulley. Uh, and that's the water pump pulley up there. It's not straight, so uh, we obviously need a spacer to help move this pump out a little bit further. So uh, it wasn't here, it wasn't with the car. Uh, this was in pieces, so uh, we're going to get a spacer in there to bump this out a little bit. Uh, power steering lines are on. The master cylinder and brake booster are in with the lines hooked up for now, but we are going to be cutting in that line lock somewhere down below here uh, near the the, uh, the valve so uh, that's a distribution valve down below there uh, which this car really doesn't even need but we'll put it in there uh, throttle linkage is mounted now here's the cable we just got to hook it up to here which in here if you can see it there's our link from the pedal uh, but the, re the 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 cable up here for the for the carburetors, of course, is mounted. Uh, no return spring. We got to find that. We don't have any return spring, so we're gonna have to look into finding out where that went or get a new one. Um, what else is on the list? Uh, a million things, but we're, we're knocking them out. Uh, quite a bit of it's done. Um, as soon as we do a few more things here, we will get this uh, front clip on its way to being back on. Uh, George has got that all painted and ready to go, so we'll bolt that together, put the, the uh, inner fender walls back in and so on. Um, I was looking at this. We're going to change these engine mount bolts here shortly. Um, Next time out in the lift, they're good bolts, nothing wrong with them, but I got some grade six bolts we're gonna put in there, grade eights. Uh, you know, never hurts to be a little bit stronger than it has to be, so there we go. Um, so, that's about it. We're gonna be uh, cleaning up around here for the uh, Roof America Fest, so we'll be working on that. And uh, this is about it for this vlog. Um, so we got Mechanic Dog, and he's gonna say, have a good night. So good night from Mr. B and Mechanic Dog from gofiggy.com, you can check them out. Uh, hey. Leave a link. Hey. Hey, oh, here he is. He's gonna talk about this, or are you gonna get this done? When the hell's this gonna be running? Um, I can't wait for him to leave. Jeez. He's leaving for China. Milk in this jar. I don't know. <laughs> Good thing we're not getting paid by the hour. Let's put it that way. So, uh, yep, that's it uh, for me. For me. <laughs> that's it for me. Don't listen to him. Um, <laughs> but do listen to him. Just not right now. <laughs> So that's it for Mr. B. Um, we'll put a link in the description to go figgy. Don't forget to check out Keith over at outlawspeedshop.com. Got some great uh, uh, restorations of cars of his own kind over there. And uh, so, yep, uh, he's got that. We'll put some links down below. Um, oh, that's about it. We're going to get this baby rolling, but we got a couple days here where we just got some other things we got to do in the shop, but we're going to get back at it as soon as those brake comes in. Uh, brakes come in, uh, the body brackets will be going nuts. So for now, it's Mr. B in the shop. We'll catch you on the flip side.